Hello students, I welcome you all to this huge, huge specialization course on Python and data analytics. To be precise, data analytics with Python. I hope you all are very excited and I hope you all are really uh, looking forward to work with full determination, with full hard work to get the best of this specialization course and uh, I just want you to give a short intro of how this course is all about well uh, as you all are aware of that this course focus on the field of data analytics with Python we have split this full specialization in a in a call in a series of seven courses at least seven courses will be there and in each course we have targeted one domain, we have targeted one area of expertise. In this course, one of this specialization, we are going to focus on all the background information, on all the theoretical knowledge or the theoretical aspects you should be aware of before you dive into the technicalities, before you jump into the actual working in this analytics. And this one course is also split it into multiple modules where in the introductory part we'll focus on introduction to Python, introduction to data analysis and what what skills are required by a data analyst and what's the job market, the application areas and more specifically what requirements in terms of software needs are there which we will be working with. So this is the first module of the first course of the full specialization package and this module is what is Python well if I begin with the, the very first assumption which I and my team has considered before starting to build this course is that we all are assuming that you guys have either have no or very little practical knowledge of Python programming language and that's why we are going to begin with very simple things as simple as A plus B. So it's the most basic which one can start with and we are going to start from very basic and the best thing is that from that basics we are going to reach to a much higher level of advanced NumPy, advanced Pandas and visualization. So it's a very good what you see a gradual learning process where we'll start with from ground zero up to a very 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 what do you say a very good level in term in the domain of data analytics and by the end of this course I mean by the end of this course one you'll understand that what what makes Python so popular what Python is all about and uh, you'll understand what exactly data analysis is and <clears throat> or you could say what skills a data analysis or a data scientist is good at and uh, the main the main uh, what do you say the main concern here is to make you all feel motivated and to make you all feel self-driven so that right from the beginning you guys are indulging yourself into this domain of data analysis and when I say when I say that what when I say you must be self-driven and you must be motivated what I mean actually is that uh, throughout the course throughout this specialization course there will be endless examples many many examples we'll be working with we'll have our own random data to work with but to have yourself or to make yourself a good and a well-trained data analyst it is important that you understand your data first that you keep on working with your own data as well we'll come to this point in much more detail later on throughout the course I'll keep on focusing on this point but right from the beginning I want to focus on this aspect that to get the subject understanding is the first necessity is the first prerequisite before getting that technical knowledge even if you know all the functions of data analytics which could be used in visualization or in other algorithms or libraries one cannot guarantee that you are a good data analyst why because 
understanding your requirements and gathering those requirements and understanding what exactly you need from your data is the most important thing. And once you are aware of that understanding, then is the time where you can really use the technical knowledge which we will be getting in this course for the perfect results. And that's what this course is all about, this course one. To get yourself that understanding, to get yourself that feeling which a data analyst should have. I, I Ideally speaking, if I, <clears throat> according to my experience so far, whenever you work with any data analysis or any problem with in the field of data analytics, what you do is you invest a lot of time to discuss the problem. You sit in groups and you discuss with your colleagues, with your friends, and you try to find the optimal solution. And then you work with the libraries. Then you work with the coding part. But before that, it is important to discuss. It is important to get the understanding, to get the requirements. And then only you can apply the functions. So the first step to be a good data analyst is to understand your data and to realize what you need from it. And then only you could use the technical knowledge which we'll be gaining in this course throughout. And that's what this course is all about, to help you understand or to help you <clears throat> get in that domain, to help you get in that, what you say, in that mood of working with data. I'll just start with some history, history of Python. Originally, Python started with the ABC programming language, and it was built specifically for teaching non-programmers. To, uh, to teach non-experts or professionals who are not in the field of coding or IT. And from there, the founder of the Python thought that it is a great, it is a great opportunity to upgrade a language or to propose a language which is as good, good as any other existing language, but still very simple in terms of complexity, in terms of structure and usage. And that's how in 1999, officially, this language was proposed. <clears throat> it was proposed and in this proposal, the founder mentioned his, his what you could say, is mentioned his future goals for the Python. And uh, it's, it's more than 20 years since it has been proposed. So Python is not a new language. Instead, it's there in the market for the last 20, 21 years. Ideally, it started in 1991 but officially proposed in 1999. The picture you can see in the presentation right now on, on the screen is the founder of the Python programming language. I'm not sure if I could spell his name correctly. Maybe his first name is Guido. I'm sorry if that is not the correct pronunciation, but, the, that, but he's the person who is the founder of Python. <clears throat> Moving on with this, some facts regarding Python. A very trivial fun fact that many of you might have thought that Python is basically a resemblance to one of the type of snakes, right? Python snake, but not originally Python was as a tribute, not as a tribute, but it was originally kept with the name of the comedy group Monty Python because the developer was a great fan of this group. So there's no such history that Python has been named and in a, with the name of a snake. But later on, if you just look at the logo of Python now, it somehow resembles a snake. So it, there's a kind of uh, unknown history with that naming stuff. But more important to this, that what, what Python is all about is that Python is a general purpose language. And when I say that Python is a general purpose language, what, what, what do I mean by this? Well, it's really simple. By general purpose language is, I mean, is that a language which, which could be used as a, as a general purpose. In general purpose, like for reading, for writing, for loading, for storing data, and that's all. So in general, you can use it for any purpose you want. Just like other languages like C or C++, it could be used for any read or write operations. The most, the most common and important operation in the field of programming languages. The most important point with Python is that it is really very simple. It's not a complex language. And uh, trust me, that is the only reason why everyone is running 
for Python now. Why everyone is for, is in a, in a, is in a race to get the skill set to get the knowledge and understanding of using Python programming language. It's all because of the fact that Python is really simple. We'll we will come to this point again and again that it's really simple, and I'll elaborate it more when we'll see what is the possible what are possible drawbacks for Python and other such stuff. But the main power point is that Python is um, the most simple language existing currently across the globe, and that's what makes and that's what make Python really famous and important. Another good point with Python, which is slightly more towards the technical area, but really very good, and is that Python is really compatible. When I say compatible, I mean compatible with in different domains, compatible in different frameworks and different kernels. And by this, I mean, for example, you're working in, a, in, a, in an industry type A, then from that type A industry, you can switch to the type B industry without much difficulties. It's because <clears throat> with Python, you can easily jump from one career domain to another one, even if the two industries are unrelated. You can realize it more when you'll be working or if you are a working professional, but that's really a very good, that's really a very good use, a very good factor of Python. And that's why it's so famous at the industry level as well, not just at the university or not just at the college level. Also, one of the main important points with Python is that, <clears throat> with the term compatibility, is that even if the main framework is in some other language like C++, I can still use Python and make it compatible with that other language. And as far as I am concerned, that could be one of the reasons why companies are so much uh, willing to opt Python as their main languages because now they need not to change their uh, code. They need not to change their main system. They can use their old, old system previously developed and they can use the Python language tools and the Python new algorithm and can use them over the old framework. And it, it will be really good enough. It's really possible. And that's why companies are really happy to know that, okay, we have got a simpler language and that language can be used above our previous frameworks. So it's really a very, a very good situation for the industries. And that's why Python is no longer restricted to classroom teachings. It is no longer restricted to university level teachings, but also at the industry levels. In fact, if I, if I quote what the director of search quality at Google Mr. Peters said that Python has been an important part of Google since the beginning and remains so as the system grows and evolves. And that's, that's really good to know this because I just told you that Python has been in the market for the last 20, 21 years officially. And Google uh, said that it's with Google since the beginning. But since the beginning, the industries were having a good idea that the, the features of Python are good enough to be adopted and it really shows how well the industries are supporting this language. And that's what makes Python not just a skill set, but an important aspect if you're trying to go for, what do you say, for increasing your job opportunities or for promotion or for further studies. And then Python design is based on the principles of simplicity and readability. It's specifically designed in the way that the user can read, can access, and can use it in a simpler manner. And that's what it is really good for, especially for beginner developers. If you are not into much of coding and you want to start with coding language where you want to focus on the logic rather than on the syntax, on the syntax or on the structures of the program, then Python is the best option because in Python, you can use your logic directly and once you'll be habitual, once you are trained of using your logic in the programming domain, then you can switch to other programming languages as well. Because even if you're doing C++ and you start with Python, then the logic will remain same. It's just the way of writing the code would be different. So once you're good in Python means you are good in the logic. And once you're good in the logic, then you can easily switch your language to some other 
programming. Uh, you can easily switch your skill to some other programming language. And that's really a very good point. And that's why that university level programming classes, Python is the first choice. Because many a time students quit programming because they are not able to understand the syntax of C or C++ because it is complex, <clears throat> right? It is complex. So many students have to quit this. But now with Python, what students can do is they can learn the logic, they can learn how to use the logic, and then they can switch to some other language as well. But the great thing is, I personally do not think, I personally do not feel that there is a need anymore to switch to any other language because the community of Python and the features with Python are so huge, are so big that you can easily use Python for any application. Even when you are looking for <clears throat> developments in the areas of big data, web application, automation task, data engineering, data analysis, data science, or AI, ML, deep learning, any, any, any domain, any technology you can think of, you will find that Python has really worked in that domain already very well. So I personally do not think that now there is a need anymore to switch your programming language. You can already get the best possible results, your desired results with Python language. But maybe if you're working with some environment like say Qt, you want to develop some Qt pla on Qt platform, you want to develop some program or develop your applications. Then also you can develop the deep learning algorithms on Python and then using stuff like TensorFlow and other libraries and other uh, <clears throat> uh, features, you can make it compatible over your C++ platform. And that's what I was talking about. So even though you want to switch to other language for some other task or task specific application, then also Python would be a very good choice to start with. And in this whole specialization, the domain, as you all know, we are focusing at is the data analytics with Python. The reason why I'm focusing on Python more is because this course is right now on what is Python. In the next module, I'll focus more on the data analysis part. But for now, I think you all must be aware of that the Python is easy to use. It has full support in different rapid development domains and also in the areas which are currently the hot topics in industries. Big data, AI, DL, data analytics and business analytics or IT analytics, or you could say, or you can say in the domain of retail insurance, in any domain, all the main uh, working domains can be easily skilled at, can be easily, you can easily uh, be trained in all the major domains industries are working on with Python. And data analytics is the base for many of these technologies. You cannot be a good big data, data scientist if you are not able to analyze the data. And you cannot be a data scientist if you're not a good data analyst. So data analytics is really a domain where you can find very huge set of job market and also you will find a very good support to jump to even higher level. So whatsoever be your interest is, data analytics with Python is the best way you can start. I'll just pause here for a while and <clears throat> in the next video, in the next tutorial, we'll see why Python is so famous and is it really true that Python is actually one of the greatest languages we have in the world right now or not? And then we will, I'll just give you a short task to work on the discussion forum. I'll come, back, come to that later on, but I hope you all enjoyed this first video and uh, thank you from my side. Take care. Goodbye.